Oh, my God. God, no. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. No. No. Put down the knife, Rosemary. Shut up. Shut up. We need you, Rosemary. You don't have to join us. Just be a mother to your baby. Our women are too old. Look at his eyes, Rosemary. He has his father's eyes. Oh, God! Shut up with your old gods or we'll kill you. Milk or no milk. Put down the knife and look at him, Rosemary. He's Adrian, your baby. Nick. It's Andrew. You're rocking him too fast. That's why he's crying. You rock him, Rosemary. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me to be his mother. Aren't you his mother? remember your name is Andrew. You mustn't believe what they tell you. That an evil thing. S someone very, very bad put you inside me. But I carried you. I know you're good. You do want to be good, don't you, Andrew? Sometimes. We're going to have to leave here soon, Andrew. But you mustn't tell them that. They mustn't ever know that I do any of these things. Soon, Andrew. Soon. Soon we'll leave. Profaneus, we offer thee possessions of thy chosen vessel, Rosemary. Seek her, seek her, seek her, seek her.
Can I help you? Oh. Can we rest here, please, just for a few moments? You'll have to be in a cafe across the street. No, here. It has to be here. It's a store. They're in some kind of a store. It's a store and it's not a store. What's that supposed to mean? What do you want from my life? I'm telling you what I'm getting. But where is it? Where is this store? Well, there's something blocking. I can't get it. There's a, there's a colored fellow. He's cleaning or something. And then the smell of dying. Get Adrian's things. summon the child. Come to us, deliver our darkness. Come to us, worship Pray. Come to us. Pray. Pray. Come to us. Please, pray. Come to us. Pray. Come to us. Come to us. of God. I told you they're in a store. Shut up! All of you! We've lost her. For now. But there's one person she'll try to reach. Rosemary's a very private person, and uh, Andrew's at a sensitive age. It was different when I was living in New York, on the stage, acting on the stage. I mean, it's a different value system there. Out here, I don't know. You see, uh, my marriage is, is everything to me. And I'm not sure it would survive if I, if I had to drop Rosemary and Andrew into this tinsel goldfish bowl, you know. How old is your son? Andrew is seven. No, he's eight. Time really flies. What is it? It's a Mr. Roman Castavet. Long distance? 
How about that? That's, that's them calling me now. Hmm. Speak of the devil. Castavet, is that your wife's maiden name? I know Roman's sort of a... It's like a godfather to, to Andrew. Godfather? Hello. How are you? I, I've been meaning to call you. I'm sure you have. But things are just great out here, fine. I mean, the financing came through for the picture exactly like you said. Guy Woodhouse's first independent production starts in three weeks. We're all very happy for you. Listen, uh, one thing. Uh, I know... I know you've done a lot for me, and I, I really hate to ask. Ask? Well, I want Paul Newman. I mean, the two of us acting together could really put this thing over the top. I mean, it's not, not the money with him. It's just that uh, well, he hates the script. Well, he doesn't really hate it. He just doesn't understand it. I thought maybe there was something that, uh, that you could do. Blind him? Christ, Roman, that's not even funny. Don't swear. And it wasn't intended to be funny. Just a reminder of another young actor. Tragically blinded an opening night. Allowing his brilliant young understudy to start his meteoric rise to stardom. I paid. I paid for that. No, you didn't pay. You rendered payment in your wife's flesh. That was enough. It's never enough, Guy. That's why we understand each other. Never be satisfied with enough. Can, can I call you back? I mean, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little hassle right now. Of course you can. Anytime. Oh, Guy, one thing. How's the weather out there? It's fine. Great. Why? Well, we were all worried back here. You see, you've got New York eyes, Guy. Are you sure you can handle all that California sunshine? Rosemary's gone. She took Adrian with her. She's going to try to reach you. She hates me. Of course. But she has no one else. I swear to you, Norman, I... I, I won't give her any aid. On the contrary. You'll give her everything she wants. It's all right, baby. It's all right. Nothing can hurt you here. Are you hungry? Here, baby. You want some milk for him? I got milk. Thank you. No, he doesn't actually like milk. Oh. Once there was a little boy, and he was a prince. But nobody knew he was a prince. Even he didn't know. And he traveled all over the countryside with his mommy. She took her little prince to a safe country where it was pretty and nice and always day and never night. And the little prince grew up tall and strong and good. And he never remembered the darkness. I remember. Yes, a collect call, please, to Mr. Guy Woodhouse. speak for three minutes and I want what I say done. Anything you say, baby, anything. If they try to trace this call, if they try anything, 
I'll kill him. I swear I'll kill him. Rosemary, I love you. Listen to me, Rosemary. I love you. I want $5,000 sent care of general delivery to 10 different cities. I'm going to pick up one of them. You'll get the others back somehow. Rosemary, I love you. Give him back. He's not ours. He's not out of us. He's out of me! <laughs> I can hurt you, Guy. I can hurt you. Do what I say. Can't get the car now. Here. Give it to me. Give it to me. No. <laughs> Here we go. You can't even get it. You'll I... never get it from us. Ha 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 ha. Here you go. They were teasing him. And all of a sudden, he, he went crazy wild. Go back. Find out, please. Let me get him some. No, go back, please. I must know if he really hurt anyone. Please. OK. Nothing. I want to know what happened. Okay, folks. All right, let's get back. And nobody got hurt. All right, folks. All right. Now just keep moving. Andrew, I have to know what happened, and I have to know why. Did you hurt somebody out there? Sleepy. Sorry, I didn't mean to shake you up. Did you find out what happened? I got till the 410 bus comes in. What 
hat for $20 that for the greatest hour of your life. And you still catch the 520 Jeez. bus. Unendurable pleasure. I have to know. Indefinitely prolonged. Please tell me. There's a lot of angry people out there. Look, for 50 bucks, I can get you out of here. There's a bus going north to Salt Lake. Goes up Alton at 6, just a couple of miles from here. I want to know what happened. I need to know. You really want to know? He killed him. Both of them. They must have done something, something terrible. He wouldn't. Their necks. He broke their necks. Now him. Gotta have him back. No. That was wrong. Adrian can't be raised like a mushroom in a dark cellar. He's part of the light. He needs it. That other child was raised as a carpenter's son. And we got a two-bit hooker. All things considered, perhaps that's fitting. Who is she? What is she? What do you want her to be?
right, buddy. Let me see it. Your license. He wants to see your license. I gotta tear this up and shove it down your throat. Uh, officer. <laughs> officer. Look, it, it was really my fault, you know. Because, uh, you know, I asked him how much he thought it'd do and the hi-fi going and everything. Well, I guess we uh, we just sort of lost track of things, you know? One day all you jokers passing through are gonna realize that other folks gotta live around here. <laughs> well... That's the last time I cover for you, Adrian. No, I mean it. That's the very last time. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sure, sorry. No, I mean it. What do you want me to say? I mean, how long have you known me? I don't know. How long has anybody known you? <laughs> Look, it was like I said to the cop. It'll never happen again, I swear to you, man. Don't call me man. Save that for your fans. Peter. Listen, Peter. Come on. Want me to listen? I tell you what. Let's start with when are we going to leave here? Uh, one of these days. We can talk about it. And every time we do, your little Aunt Margin comes up with another toy to keep you here. I'll talk to you next week. I promise you. Sure. Bloody Mary. Anyhow, Saturday is my birthday. I can't split till after that. You know what a big deal she makes out of them every year. Look around you. Is that what you really want out of life? Oh, well, you know. Well, what did I do now? I had a call from the Temple City boys about your car. And about a plate's RS-4761, right? You got me. Adrian, stop that. Were there any damages? Was, was anybody hurt? Yeah. How much does it cost? I'll buy it. Not this time. If you do it one more time, I'm going to throw the book at you. Of course. That's your job. We understand. I won't have you driving like that anymore. Did I say I was driving? I don't care who was driving. Don't you realize you could be hurt? Mm. Why do I get the feeling I spent my whole life being safely packed in plastic wrap? People care about you. You're important to them. Is that so strange? 
I mean, isn't it natural that we should all be concerned, especially since your parents died in an automobile accident? Tell me about that again. Adrian, we agreed not to dwell on the past. Come on, tell me, what do you want for your birthday? To be away from here. How about a guitar? Got to be newer, better ones than this one. What do you say? Tell me, come on, what do you want? I think maybe Peter and I'll go to San Francisco. Who is this Peter Simon? What does he want out of you? He's my best friend. You gonna buy me another one? I don't trust him. I think he's using you, but we'll talk about that some other time. Right now, I want to talk about your birthday Saturday night. I happen to know that your godparents are coming with some of their friends and they're planning something special. Every year it's special. This year it's going to be different. You know how they are with their astrology stuff. It, there's something in the stars this year. What's that? Could you leave me alone now? I'm tired. I gotta get some sleep. I got a late set tonight. I wish you'd give up that ridiculous singing. I mean, Just if... leave me alone. Adrian! Adrian, listen to me. This year, I promise you, it's going to be special. It's going to be different. Adrian, I swear to you. I promise. This birthday, something special will happen, I promise. Adrian, please. Adrian, Adrian. This year, this year he will come. This year Satan will come and his powers will be consummated in Adrian. We must be patient. Christ didn't receive his powers until nearly his 30th year. Adrian must give us a sign that evil has triumphed before he will be given all of Satan's powers. And if he doesn't? Then we must take what we need from within him and destroy the shell that remains. Take your rightful place.
But I can't. I mean, I, I wish I could be there, but uh, no way. You've never come before, and we feel that may have been the problem. Well, look, I mean, even if I could get free, I mean, what would I say to him? Nothing. There's no reason for him to even know who you are. <laughs> I, I don't think I can swing it. I mean, we start on location Monday morning. That should be no problem. We'll know by midnight Saturday. No? Whether Adrian is too impure a vessel to inherit the full powers of his true father. Whether he can prove to him that evil is dominant within him. Actually, it has its roots in quite a primitive ceremony. The boy must be blooded in an act of violence before the tribe accepts his full manhood. Look, uh, Roman. I can't get, I, I just can't get involved in all this. Do you need to be reminded how involved you already are? <laughs> well, I mean, don't get me wrong, Roman. I mean, you know me, if, uh, if I have to be there, I will. Yes, yes, I know you, and I know you'll be there. <sighs> what happens to Adrian if, if none of this takes? Given your delicate sensitivities, Guy, I'm not sure you really want to know. You missed the midnight set. Cold, your room. More nightmares. Mm. Get help. Where? There are places. You back to your Jesus freak bit? Ready to try? Uh, <laughs> when are you going to stop trying to get inside my head? I've got enough in there without you. <sighs> I can't help myself. When I flunked out of divinity school, I promised him I'd pick up a silver tube for them anyway. <laughs> Where are we going? Back? You've been going forward too long. Go back, find yourself. It's all inside your head. Get it out. Well, doctor. Where would you like me to start? At the beginning, with your parents. What do you remember about them? Again. Again. My father. Nothing. My mother. Something.
Yes. Good thing. Try and kill yourself in this thing. Who wins? Who wins two? Is Jekyll killing Hyde? Or is Hyde killing Jekyll? He still ain't blooded himself yet. He will. Soon. Soon. Hello, Peter. Peter, help me. No, I'm at the state line. Help me. Help me. I tried to kill a man. I wanted to. They wanted to. Come on. Let's 
get out of here. Just leave the car, and we'll split this place once and for all. No. No, I can't. Well, I gotta go back and get something. There's nothing you need back there. I can't go without it. of hell shall burst asunder, and the beasts of the field shall turn into the masters. Tell me what happened last night. Adrian, tell me. I want to know what happened last night. I don't remember. Adrian, was anybody hurt? I don't remember. I'm tired. Leave me alone. If you hurt anyone badly, I have a right to know, Adrian. some trouble last night. How did you hear about that? No, no matter. I just wanted you to know I understand. A few wild oats season the mixture. Adrian doesn't want to talk about that. But apparently nothing happened. No. I suppose if you wanted to get some rest, wouldn't want you falling asleep at your birthday party tonight. My birthday's tomorrow. Ah, well, you see, this is a special occasion. Did you know that you were conceived at midnight? Did I ever tell you that? I've always been fascinated by the ritual of birthdays. After all, when does life actually begin? It's all right. Your aunt and I have both tried them. <laughs> Must keep up with the times. As a matter of fact, at our age, we're much more worried about what liquor does to our liver. What do I do with this? I told Sydney it's a stupid gift. Use it as a letter opener. <laughs> Don't hurt his feelings. What is the matter? Nothing. Nothing. Just sometimes I see things. You're always a gifted child. The others. 
When are they coming? Probably in their rooms, tidying up. Don't disappoint them, Adrian. They may not be blood relatives, but they all gave money when your parents died. I want to ask you about that. We'll tell you anything you want to know. You're entitled. But first, a toast for a birthday boy. Drink and be oh. happy. Minnie made it. <laughs> it's out of prunes and leftovers and stuff. I call it Chateau Rhubarb. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. Where's Woodhouse? Out in the car. He doesn't want to be seen going through the casino. Well, there's no other way. All the lines are down in the back. I'll tell them our loving surrogate father is here. I've seen most of your pictures. I do. Say, so what brings you up here, Mr. Woodhouse? And maybe you'd like to catch our 12 o'clock show. I'm we got saying. a hell of a singer, Adrian. Maybe you've heard of him. Maybe you'd like to help him. A man said later. <sighs> Who is that choker? Merely a momentary complication. We have more pressing concerns. OK, let's get this thing done and over with. What is it you want me to do? Attend. Attend Adrian at midnight. What happens then? Well, if he's judged worthy by his true father, full possession of his body, mind and soul, the year one will have begun. The year one? A new era. The end of light, the beginning of darkness, and the culmination of everything you originally contracted for. Where is he? Minnie and the others are preparing him. Not in your reality.
didn't it? Take, I could have told you it wouldn't. He hasn't bloodied no one. He ought to do it. He screwed it up. killed him, wouldn't you? But you, you told me. It was simply a test of faith, Guy. We've lost the battle for Adrian's mind, but we have further use for his body. But we have to mess him up a little. Put him out of commission, so uh, stick the knife in wherever you want, his shoulder, maybe. lost yet. Something's happening. Let him go to the music. better than the mere shedding of blood. 
There must be more joy in hell over the corruption of one innocent and all the chanting of the ungodly. We want Adrian, can you hear me? Adrian. Uh. Adrian, are you listening? Stay with us. You're all alone now, Adrian. Did you know that? Your aunt is dead. Your friend died, too. Jesus, don't say that to him. Adrian, can you hear me? Uh. Can you hear me, Adrian? Andrew. And go! Your name is listed as Adrian Dorn. You were injured in a freak storm. A clinical board met and judged you terminal comatose, and they sent you here. Your turn. Where is here? Carmel, the Moross Clinic. We try to help people like you. Like me? That's not important right now. Why do you want it to be called Andrew? I am Andrew. Just Andrew? Anything else? I don't know. I can't remember. Wind. The wind was terrible. And I was dancing. I must have been. I had to have been stoned. And then there was a fight outside. And the cross burning. pieces, so many pieces, out of control. Tell us about those other people. They were like, like relatives, especially two of them. 
I can remember them always. Like a grandfather and grandmother. No. No living relatives. up at the airport. There's no record of where they came from. But this man was different. The police report indicates that someone came in a limousine with Hollywood ID plates. Always a strong child. Like his father, cast down only to rise again. Why didn't you kill him when you had the chance? There were several reasons. Adrian was an imperfect vessel, a battleground lost, but he was of the flesh. Among other considerations, we decided not to follow the classic example of destroying our redeemer. I killed for you. And you will again? Never. Ah, will you lay off all this killing talk? We only got a couple more days out here, and you said we were going to meet Charlton Haston. Many, please. Guy has legitimate questions and concerns. Now, at a point, we discovered that we did not need the mind of Adrian, just his physical organs. We also found out that we could not get what we needed from a totally catatonic Adrian. Just give me the bottom line for once. Fair enough. What we require now is a temporary use of his functioning body, or a portion thereof. Temporary? When the time comes, you and I will talk about that. As I said, it would be something of a sacrilege if a member of the coven had to dispose of what remains. Apparently, the computer that makes them up couldn't stand the thought of just Andrew. I mean, what would happen if we got another Andrew no last name in here? So, you're Andrew One. Adrian? The year one? What's that? Nothing. Nothing. Doctor!
please don't. It's all right. No! No! It's all right. It's all right. Go down. It's all right. Why? Why? Andrew, they couldn't let you leave here. Your ID badge was coded. An alarm went off the minute you left your room. Andrew, I tried to tell you it wasn't so simple. You're in a state court. You're criminally insane. <laughs> I don't understand. A judicial review board sent you here. They judged you criminally insane and they committed you. What did they say I did? Suspicion of murder. A man was electrocuted. They found your fingerprints on the high-tension wire. I don't think it went much further than that. They never thought you'd come out of the coma. Something about a prison of the mind precedent. I don't know, maybe it would have been different if all your relatives weren't dead. They're not. The records show that you don't have any. Records lie. Everything lies. I didn't kill Peter. But I know who did. We should go to the police. No, I don't know his name. Just that he's been in the shadows of my life. Always. And when I find him, I wonder. Is there any point in trying to tell you a story you couldn't possibly believe? Try me. I can prove everything I'm going to tell you. But I've got to be out of here to do it. You're the only one who can get me out. You've got to help me. You're telling me he's free? Somehow he got free? The boy is not without certain inherited capabilities on his father's side. Could he come here? I mean, could he find us? Not us, you. You're part of his roots. And should he ever find you, I think it conceivable that he might even kill you. There's a big market for the supernatural right now. You've got to understand that audience out there. Uh, Roman, I mean, you know, they don't know what to believe in anymore. I mean, they, they, they've just, uh, well, they want to be turned on by the far out, uh, by the mystical. They've had two generations of those Bible picks, and now they're really going big for the flip side. Uh, fascinating. Well, I mean, I hope you understand that uh, I've gone through a lot of these scripts and turned down most of them because I didn't want to do anything cheap or yes. exploitive, you yes. understand? Uh, yes. This play came from a Broadway show. Did I tell you that? Yes, I believe you did mention that. Uh, you know, this is ridiculous. I could have gotten a limousine to take you to the uh, How to much the to the airport? Yeah. What do you mean? You gotta have a flat rate. Everybody's got a flat rate. Ugh. No, Guy, you've done more than enough for us already. Uh, and I trust you feel we've done enough for you. So let's leave it on that note, shall we? Uh, Roman, um, well, we'll be in touch, won't we? I mean, after all these years. We'll call you. Roman, uh, don't do this to me, please. Besides, you have Lake in here to take care of all the little limited requests you may have. Roman, don't do this to me. Creep. Feeb. <laughs> That's in the past, my dear. We should be celebrating our new beginning. 
You think he will kill Adrian? Possibly, but not before we get the one more thing we need from Adrian. Then they can kill each other for all the difference it makes. Yes, there's a certain appropriate neatness to all this. If they were anywhere, they'd be here. Even if you find them, what are you going to do? Him. It starts with him. I have to find him. Then I have to find her. Rosemary. Rosemary? Who's Rosemary? Look, they killed your friend. They're perfectly capable of killing you. I've thought about that. But they don't act without reason. That's the worst part. They're fanatics, but without emotion. If they didn't kill me, there's a reason. I just have to find out. All you know is a man came in a limousine and he was part of your nightmare. You don't know where he is. You don't even know who he is. Oh, I know who he is. At least who he is to me. I can, I can talk to you. I can't talk to Roman. You know what I mean? I had a big career going in the East on stage. What did I need all this phony jazz for? Say something, will you? <laughs> funny. You're, you're a funny man, you know that? You know what Roman says? Roman says you're a little demon in charge of little things. What are you going to do for me, hmm? You're going to get me a little chicks, hmm? Little parts and little pictures. You know what you people are? Litterers. You go around and litter and you leave it for me to clean up and then you forget. It was me. Me that stopped that what's-his-name, Peter, from screwing up your whole act. Do you believe that? I'm sorry. I must be stoned out of my head. I'm sorry, I just... Erase everything I said, okay? Hey, listen, will you, will you talk to Roman for me, huh? Get him to do something about that kid. You don't need him anymore. Do you really presume to know what we need? That, that freaky kid, he could, he could blow it for all of us. Us? Somebody's got to do something before somehow he finds his way here. It's too late. He's already here. Andrew, it's better, believe me. It belongs there. I thought about going up to Big Sur. <laughs> I know, 
everybody thinks about going up to Big Sur. I thought about Mexico, too. It's so beautiful, so many beautiful beaches. Something for the whole family. Mm. Even if you don't have a family yet. What is this? The man at the little grocery store said it was Greek. I didn't get the exact name. Uh, he called it a plaisir d'amour. <laughs> Mispronounced, of course. Hmm. Curious undertaste. <laughs> Don't drink it if you really hate it. Of course, you'll spoil everything. You have no idea what I went through once I said I'd take it. The sexy little leers, the sly innuendo. I don't think they think of much else down here. Tired. Drink the rest of it and lie down for a while. just happen to be on the other side. It was wrong with Rosemary. You can't force things that way. Some of us realize that. There must be a new vessel. A new baby. Girl, child, born out of darkness. Raised for that one moment when a new seed will be planted. There's a righteousness to it. Two thousand years of one world, then two thousand years of another.
you really fighting against? What was so good about your 2,000 years? Wars and persecution and famine. Can ours be so much worse? Don't fight it. Go with it. Go with it, Adrian. Go with us. Give it to us. <laughs> Drive, but she, she couldn't stop it. They killed her. Who's that? The coven. She tried to stop it, but it wouldn't stop. They killed her. No. There's no one in it. You'll see. see some identification. You hear what I said? I, I have to see some identification. Come on. Hey! Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. Over him. Is he holding? No, but he must be on something. I think we better take him in and check him out. Yeah. It was as if the little prince had more than one daddy, like fairy godfathers. And one was bright as sunshine, and the other came from a place that was dark as night. And they would fight over the little prince. Who won? Well, the bright godfather won, of course. You like sunny days better than nighttime, don't you? Sometimes. Andrew. Win a few, lose a few. We mustn't live in the past, my dear. Our thoughts and hopes must be directed toward a new beginning. A resurrection, so to speak. That's nice. I like that. The doctor will see you now. Oh. Granddaughter is going to be fine. 
just fine. No need for any concern. She should have a perfectly normal pregnancy. Ah, oh. well, that's wonderful. You don't know how worried we were. Like we said, she was in an awful bad auto accident. I don't know how she'd come out in one piece. You might say it was a kind of a miracle, if you believe in that kind of a thing. 